Welcome to the Advertising Forum. This is episode three of our Brand Purpose Series, sponsored by Zephyr. Today we welcome Rich Redden, co-founder and co-CEO of Zephyr. Rich, we're excited to have you with us today. And the first two episodes we had with Lewis Jones from the Brand Safety Institute and Mark Pru were great. Thank you for being here, Rich. Thanks. Thanks, ATG. And thanks, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Love being here. Rich, brand safety is obviously a very important topic, but what strategies does Zephyr use to help clients measure the impact of their purpose-driven campaigns, especially within walled garden platforms where audience targeting and data access are often more restricted? Well, I should say when we first got into the brand safety space, um, because we're a relatively new entrant into the space from the the incumbents and the legacy players that were already uh, working in the space, we we came into the space because we knew that walled gardens would be a more challenging environment and a very different environment to build in. And so we we recognized this was an opportunity to build something from the ground up that was specific about getting labeling and understanding these walled garden environments correctly and being very transparent with it. And I don't think we could have ever guessed that the, the, the brand safety space would go in the direction it has. And what I mean by that is now we have all these LLMs, generative models, foundational models. It's just creating a lot of, um, a lot of issues in terms of um, safety and suitability, and a lot of the platforms are now using for their for their for their um, targeting tools. They're using this this AI driven targeting um, criteria and technology. And so, at Zephyr, we provide complete transparency in terms of where a, a, a brand's ads appear um, in these world gardens and. That just becomes increasingly important as we move into this kind of opaque black box space with targeting, um, with like first party targeting tools. We're a way to give everybody comfort like, Hey, okay, I want the performance because I want to use the AI driven tools that the platform is, is, um, is offering. But I also need to have the assurance that I understand where it's running and if it's safe and suitable. So in what ways does Zephyr's, you know, tech solution for media activation and measurement adapted to align with brands goals in, in those black box environments where, you know, platform algorithms are also quite challenging as well as it controls a lot of your distribution. Yep. So our old thesis was we want to give control over to the marketer and over to the agency, and we want to empower them with really, um, you know, powerful tools that they could use. And so that required that we build basically from the ground up a new sort of uh, tech architecture. Um, And like I said, we, we had a lot of experience of recognizing that the legacy players weren't doing it correctly because um, I think it was YouTube first uh, brought on the open web legacy providers in 2017. And so for years and years and years before we actually came on and became a brand safety and suitability partner on YouTube, we could see the the labeling that was happening on the platform and how it was not actually accurate. And I don't think there's a lot of scrutiny over that. I think that's changing now. Uh, obviously, the DOJ is involved and in looking into things now, but there wasn't a lot of scrutiny. But we recognized like, okay, if we're going to build something that's robust and we can be completely transparent which will be important as we move more to this opaque black box solutions that the platforms offer, the the transparency and the accuracy was going to be more and more important. And so um, that's why, you know, we started building in 2017. We didn't actually launch. It took us three years to build the solution to where we felt like it was market ready. And we launched in 2020 with our solution. So that's how challenging it is from a technical standpoint. And look, there's challenges, and I think that brings us into the next question, which is, you know, how do the platforms, you know, challenge or support your client's ability to engage with social and environmental issues that are central to or part of, you know, the brand purpose? Yeah, this is a real push and pull here with uh, the platforms. So obviously, um, incentives become a part of this, right? So our incentive, we don't work on the sell side at all. We don't work with publishers. We feel like that's conflicted. If you work on the sell side and the buy side, we just work on the buy side. And our whole goal is to always just be completely transparent and accurate with the brand. Now, sometimes that's at odds with the platform, right? Because if you're going to um, showcase something that might make the platform look less uh, attractive, they don't love that. 
right? So that's kind of the push and the pull. And they are a partner in that, right? Remember, we get our data feeds directly from the platforms. They they are the ones that are aggregating all the data. And then through APIs, we're getting the data feeds from them. So it's not as if you can just write off the platforms and say, well, screw those guys. We're just going to go ahead and scrape their, um, you know, their uh, platform. You can't actually do that. They can stop you from doing that. I can see bots on the platform. They can stop it. So you need to have a relationship with them. And thankfully, I think we've changed the tenor of the conversation with the platforms where we said, look, guys, we don't mind actually making your platform more safe across the board, not just on campaigns that that we're applied to, but across the board. So we're willing to actually give you some of our data signal back so that you can actually use that to ensure that like, oh, by the way, other brands that that would be around that content that might be considered unsuitable uh, it, it, it either it's demonetized or it's taken off the platform. So we approached it differently, but it definitely is a partnership between us, the platform, and the brand or the agency. And all constituents are important, and you have to meet them. You have to meet them in the middle a bit, you know, and say we just can't completely be independent and be like, look, we're never going to show you how we label content. We don't think that's productive. So by feeding data back into the platforms and helping the platforms. We think rising tides lift all boats. And that was very unusual when, when that happened. So for rising tides lifting all boats, and I love that yep. that phrase. It's one of my favorite phrases to use. What role does transparency or sometimes the lack thereof play in Zephyr's goal to support purpose-driven marketing? In other words, positive social outcomes that are taking place within these walled gardens. Well, let me be clear. We Philosophically, we believe that transparency is more important than anything uh, in terms of like, w- w- if you had to balance the two between like, okay, we're going to be black box and opaque but, or transparency, we will always lean to transparency. I recognize the very nature of sometimes using AI driven targeting tools that are out of the control of the marketers is like you're releasing a little bit of control, but it doesn't mean you have to release the appetite to have complete transparency. And that's where Zephyr steps in. And by the way, that's why the platforms I think appreciate, they're like, okay, look, as long as you're going to work with us to ensure that like, if there is something that's not safe or unsuitable, like we just announced with TikTok that you can use their first party filters on pre-bid and then we will be piping back data if there's anything that is doesn't meet the brand's suitability um, flavor, we'll be piping back that data so they can optimize their first party filters in real time. And that's the kind of union you get when you're just committed to transparency. I think it's very um, uh, naive to think that we're ever going to move to a world where people just say, here's a truckload of money. I trust you platform to spend it. Give me, give me my performance and I don't want to know anything else. I just think times are just so challenging with different kinds of content. And let's be honest, these platforms, the reason they're powerful is because they're digital public squares. Anybody can say anything at any time. So it's a, it's a literal minefield for, for, brands when they're thinking about like how to reach customers. So because it's a literal minefield for brands, how does Zephyr work with those particular brands and those agencies that are repping the brands to actually handle the safety and performance within that ever growing, ever so fruitful, sometimes overwatered walled garden? Great question. So we work with the brand first and foremost through the agency with the brand to understand their suitability preferences. And previously we used, we started with the GARM foundational work, the GARM structure. We still, it's a still great, it's a building block foundational, you know, structure to be able to get on the same page with, with suitability specifically. And so we'll start understanding and talking to the agency about like, what are the brand's preferences for risk? Are they okay with this kind of being adjacent to this kind of content or that kind of content? So we have a whole, methodology that we run through the brand or the agency. And then we ask for things that are just out of the norm. I mean, some some brands are like, look, I don't want to be around if it's CPG brand, sometimes they say, I don't want to be in there around plastics or something. You know, that's pretty that's pretty wild. It's like, but I but I get it. They're like, they don't want that. They don't want to be like, okay, there's tons of plastics, you know, floating in the ocean somewhere in the North Atlantic and you know, you, they just don't want to be associated with anything uh, that that's around that. And so 
every brand has certain nuances to what they think is most appropriate to be adjacent to. So we take in all that signal. And that's been really, um, it's empowering for a brand because it's like, okay, you will do these custom, this custom work. And I think that's also kind of what separates Zephyr is we've always been committed to custom work, custom algorithms um, to make sure that brands can feel like they can be there in a, a proactive way and and to reach the consumer. So Rich, as the, the co-CEO, as the co-founder of Zephyr, you've been building up a, a great brand for many years. What are you actually most excited about and passionate within both our space and just what your team is building right now? Great question. I am nice. I am so excited about AI. I'm so excited about these new generative models. I know it's going to create a complexity in Battlefield, but we're also using a lot of these new models in the work that we're doing. And at first, our data science team was a little freaked out because they're so powerful, these models. And I don't think anybody could have predicted how quick and how fast they're iterating. I mean, look, the new OpenAI model is just unreal by the way by the time it comes out maybe there'll be a new one but the it's the three uh oh it's just incredible the one that has a little conversation between each other checking each other um just checking the results but you're going to see new iterations with gemini you're going to see it with llama you're going to see it and so the amount of capital that's going into that that arena and what it's going to allow tech companies like ourselves to specifically tune those models and train those models on behalf of marketers, I think it's going to be amazing. And I think it's going to unlock a huge amount of potential. We're doing a lot in the AI responsibility space, which is very exciting, which we're going to be announcing soon. But um, it's just a it's a wonderful time to be a marketer um, with all these powerful tools at our disposal. Rich, thank you for hopping on with us today. And, and thank you for sponsoring this series, Brand Purpose. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to speaking with you soon. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. It's all about, you know, information is power in ad tech. So keep up the good work. Keep informing. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich.